Welcome back to Propeller Heads TV. I'm your host, Matt Sloan, CEO of Skyfire Consulting. If you're not familiar with us, we help police and fire departments all around the country start safe and legal drone programs. Today we're here with Josh Pruitt from DroneSense, a software company that we've worked very closely with for the last couple of years. Um, and if you're not familiar with DroneSense, we're going to dive into it here, but the basic gist is you guys do live streaming, uh, program management, telemetry, kind of tracking everything from start to finish. Yeah, we're like a one-stop shop for public safety drone operations when it comes to software. Awesome. Well, um, like I said, we've used this quite a bit for the last couple of years. We used it during the Super Bowl, so I've, I've had it as a user. Of course, we also sell it here at Skyfire. So walk me through the kind of the three different parts of DroneSense. So we've got the airbase. Uh, and the, the program management side, and then we've got the Ops Center and all the other okay. things. Great. So yeah, there's, there's really three facets to the software that make up DroneSense. Uh, we have DroneSense Pilot, which is going to be your command and control software that's going to take over all of your DJI Go, Go4, Pilot app, uh, and then moving into Ops Center, which is going to be open in your EOC. This is where you're going to be viewing live streams, planning flights, um, looking at flights in real time. And then the third piece is Airbase, which is the fleet management tool for the platform. That's where you're tracking pilots, aircraft hours, uh, COA reporting if you're flying under a COA. All your flight telemetry all lives in Airbase and they all three talk seamlessly. So let's talk about each one individually a little bit. So talk about the piloting experience. So you're using this app instead of the DJI app of choice. Um, what is that experience like? Uh, what, how is it different from using the DJI app? So you're going to notice when you first log into the Pilot app that the interface is completely different. It's not a new set of controls to learn, it's just a new interface specifically designed for public safety. So there's a little bit more going on than you would see within DJI, however it's all geared towards fire, law enforcement, EMAs, uh, and we, you know, again we take DJI out of the equation as far as software while still utilizing the DJI hardware in their full range of sensors. So are you getting at the fact that there's more data security within the DroneSense app environment? Definitely more data security. We operate on the Amazon Web Servers GovCloud, so that's where like 90 something percent of the federal government has all their holdings is on GovCloud, and so if it's good enough for the federal government, I think it's more than good enough for DroneSense. So I know one of the things that we're real careful about saying is like, we're not saying that absolutely no data is getting out, but you're saying that the large majority of data is not getting out. Right, right. We, we operate on the GovCloud servers here in the States, so we feel really good about the level of security that we can provide to our users. All right, so that's on the piloting end. On the operations side, now you're up in the air. Um, what, what does the operations side look like and who's going to use that and for what? So Ops Center, this is going to be what's pulled up in the back of the Chief's vehicle or in a command center at an EOC, really anywhere around the world you can pull up your drone's feed in real time through Ops Center. It's cloud-based, so any device with connectivity, whether it be a cell phone, a tablet, laptop, a computer, uh, this is where you're going to be viewing all of the flights in real time. And when I say real time, we're talking sub-second latency a pretty decent high def feeds as long as you have good connectivity there's no limit to the number of feeds you can put out so at the Super Bowl this year where well, we have two running at any given time yeah we streamed like something like 96 hours of video through this platform yeah. so I think I've put it through the test and can say that it worked really well so yeah two streams at the Super Bowl and then for the Indy 500 this year we had six streams running at any given time so it's actionable data and it can be streamed to essentially anywhere in the world you know Chief can be on vacation sipping a cocktail in Hawaii and if something pops off, he can pull up the drone feed and be looking at what's happening back in his territory and able to make decisions based on what he's seeing. Um, one of the cool features too that I love about OpCenter and how it communicates with Pilot is that you've got this back and forth communication. So you can actually drop pins on the software and ask your pilot to go check them out or your pilot sees something that they want you to be aware of, they drop a pin and it comes back to the operations center. So I think that's a really cool uh, set of features you've got there and then the two-way messaging, so you basically, how does that work? Yeah, so there, there are some back and forth communication tools uh, between Ops Center and Pilot specifically. Uh, right now it's just a text-based communication, but I can, as a pilot, send information back to Matt, who might be in an EOC, telling him, you know, a little more information beyond just what the camera is seeing. I can give him some more context, or vice versa, you know, he might have more information in the EOC than I have out on the front line flying, so he can be dropping pens or dropping markers or points of interest that he wants me to go look at and it's all happening in real time. 
So the third part of this is the uh, is airways, right? This, this is the program management side. You know, streaming is kind of the sexy part of this. Right. The uh, but the part that actually like really makes a whole a big difference in the way you manage your program is the airbase side. So yeah. tell me about that. So to me, airbase is the most important part of the software. When you're starting a UAS program for public safety, there's going to be a ton of data to keep up with, and especially agencies that are flying under COAs, they're going to be required to report on that data. So we give you a place to track all of that data. And I mean, we're talking flights, hardware, pilot information, pilot proficiencies, training hours, maintenance schedules, checklists for pre-flights. Uh, we give you the ability to file NOTAMs through Airbase. Uh, there's a robust reporting bit that comes with Airbase and then even media storage. So we open up our section of the GovCloud servers to allow our users to store their media securely within the platform. And all that media comes back and associates with the flight, so you can go back and reference data, exactly. and just, everything's geotagged. Yep. You even got weather data on there too, so if you exactly. want to go back and see what the cloud cover was that day, exactly. uh, it's pretty, really incredibly robust. Um, so the best part about all this, I think, is the price. It's really not horribly expensive. So. Um, what is the price point for the for the platform and, and how do you uh, sign up? Yeah, so right now drones that are fixed sensors, so your Vanoms, your Mavics are all going to be $99 a month. And then your larger multi-sensor aircraft like your M210s, your Inspires that have interchangeable sensors, those are going to come in at $199 a month. Um, we're working on changing pricing, but right now that's how it sits. Yeah, and I mean honestly if you look at everything else that's out there in the market, it's I think it's reasonably priced and, and our customers that have used it feel that way. Yeah. Um, and so one of the things that's really cool that you guys offer is the ability to actually try all the software. So tell me a little bit about that. Right. So we offer 30 day trials to any agency that wants to demo the software. Um, that way you can get it out, use it in the real world, use it in your workflows to see how it truly integrates with your program. Um, all you have to do is reach out to myself or really anyone at the DroneSense team and we can get you started and set up on that. Awesome, and then if you're a client of ours and you're talking to us on a regular basis, we can obviously hook you up with these guys, get you started up. Um, one of the things you talked about workflow, I just want to hit on real quickly. Um, the one sort of, the only complaint really that I hear about DroneSense is you have to use it on an iPad right now. Um, of course, the, the matrices come with the Crystal Sky. So I know that integration is coming. Um, I've actually seen the demo. You've seen the demo. It's on its way. So rest assured, it's coming. Yes. Um, and uh, I know that's priority number one for you guys. So uh, you know that's that's something to kind of make everybody aware of. As well. Yeah. The Android support is coming. It's been a long time coming, but there's been some unique challenges for our development team. Uh, but we are very, very close. Uh, to putting that into production uh, and also on some other manufacturers. We're working with several other manufacturers. I'm not going to drop names right now, uh, but hopefully within Q4 and going into Q1 of next year, you're going to see some additional options for hardware on the platform as well. That's really exciting stuff. Should we, uh, should we take it out for a little flight? Let's go fly. Let's do it. All right, so we're going to fly. It's uh, it's September in Georgia, so it's 4,000 degrees. So we're in here. The drums hang out the shade. <laughs> yeah, exactly. definitely. Yeah. But don't worry, we can still see it. All right, take us through it. I've got the pilot app open. Uh, the one main thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to run through my checklist real quick. Very simple, pops up on the screen. You touch the little red X's, make sure everything goes green, and then you're ready to launch. I just want to hit on real quickly um, the one sort of, the only complaint really that I hear about the is So there are some similarities between how we display the information and how DJI displays the information. Uh, we give you the, the battery meter going across the top. Uh, but you also see we've got a lot of information we're showing you. So GPS connectivity, uh, the connectivity on the aircraft, the, the fact that we're connected to the DroneSense cloud. Uh, we see that our checklist is clear. We've got 87% battery left on this battery, 97% battery on the iPad. Uh, this little thermal notation lets us know that we are in fact flying a thermal because we're flying the Mavic 2 uh, Enterprise Dual. And you've got all that functionality for the Dual as well. All of it, yeah. All the functionality in the FLIR we surface through DroneSense. So you can change palettes. So yeah, we can easily on. change palettes between the MSX or just the straight infrared. Uh, we have the ability to set isotherms. Uh, we can even do a, a, therm a thermal alert area, so where it's going to pick up the hottest and the coldest temperature in frame and give those both to us. Uh, and then given that this is a radiometric thermal, we can select a little center point and then anywhere we touch on the screen, is going to give us a temperature readout. That's awesome. And this works the same way with any drone, right? So I can exactly. see 30, XD2, yep. any of the other sensors. Yeah, full functionality between all the DJI hardware as well as the sensors. There's no 
limiting factors into what sensors you can run and what they can or can't do as compared to DJI um, and Drone Sense Pilot. All right, oh. All right, so while Josh is up in the air flying, I'm gonna pull up Op Center here so you can see uh, what this interface looks like. This is basically uh, the map view. We've got all of our um, Lance grids uh, overlaid on here in our, our controlled airspaces. Uh, here's Josh's name uh, on the left-hand side, so I basically just click on his drone, and it'll tell me um, that he's up, he's flying manually, he's got a Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual, and all the telemetry, and then I just click this button here, and it'll actually bring up his video stream. So, you can see all of your um, flight data here on the video as well. Um, I can tell you, just watching the two between each other, um, that the latency is incredibly fast. We're under one second here. Um, and uh, if we had multiple drones in the air, we'd be able to do this uh, with all of them. So we'd be able to launch every single stream at the same time. Um, one of the other cool things, um, obviously the video is the nicest looking part, but we talked about the messaging features here. I can actually send a message to Josh. Hey Josh, great flying. And I can send that directly to him and it'll pop up on his yeah. screen as well. Just so you see, so it pops up on my screen as well. So if I said, hey, I need you to go check out something, um, you would get that message. The other thing I can do is say, I want Josh to go check out, you know, we've got reports of a, of a fire or something, I can actually just drop a little icon here and send that to Josh. Um, it'll show up here on the screen as the fire icon, and then Josh will get that to show up on his map as well, and he can go fly directly to that point. Um, and you can draw polygons and you can hot zones and cool zones and all that kind of yep. stuff. There's some, some airspace deconfliction tools. Uh, we've got ortho mosaic and 3D mapping and modeling built in. Uh, point of interest, which for all of you agencies that are flying any of the DJI Enterprise hardware, DJI Pilot will not let you fly an orbit or a point of interest, but Drone Sense we give you that ability. All right, so we're back inside, and we are now on the airbase platform. You kind of walked us through what it does, but let's actually look at the flight that we did here. Okay, excellent. So we're going to go into airbase. We're going to pull up our flights, obviously. We'll look for the flight that we just had earlier. Click on it. We get some basic information about the flight. So we get a general overview, start date, end date, the duration of the flight, who the pilot was, and some basic telemetry as well as the location. Uh, we can see the personnel involved. Obviously, I was the pilot. Uh, all the hardware from the batteries to the drone to the iPad that was used. Uh, then we get some basic details of the flight, so that's where we're going to see the breadcrumb trail and the weather information. Uh, but then we can go down here to the bottom and click View Flight. And what this is going to open up is Drone Sense Replay Engine, and it's actually the same uh, the same login you use for your normal Drone Sense account. What this pulls up is a Google Earth view, and then it's going to actually show you in 3D space. Your flight path. And so this is not, a, what's cool about this too is it shows you not on the flight path, but it actually shows you the uh, view of the camera. So you see where the, where the camera is facing. So we talk a lot with our agencies that are using this stuff about like, this is a great way, you know, to answer a Freedom of Information Act request where somebody's right. like, hey, you were looking at my window. Violating or, my civil liberties. Right, so actually, you, you we weren't even looking towards Right, we were looking in a completely opposite direction. So that's pretty cool. And then when you, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but when you dump the media in, you can actually associate some of the media with the flight. On the exactly. Engine. So Replay Engine will show you all the points where start, stop, a video recording happened, where the camera was triggered. Um, and then obviously you can see all the movement of the drone. And again, it's all in 3D space. Uh, very similar to the cockpit that you get in Pilot. So we're getting some basic information across the bottom here as far as horizontal and vertical speed, our height above terrain and our AGL. Uh, we get the heading on both the pilot and the aircraft as well as the gimbal angles. And then across the top we can see that we had great GPS connectivity, that our checklist was actually run. We see battery, the drone connectivity, cloud connectivity. It's all there for you in replay engine. So when you go back, this is a great way to you know keep your pilots accountable. Or, exactly. You know, if there were an incident, you go back and make sure everything was followed properly exactly. and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, this is a really great addition. Um, show us, uh, if we go back to uh, Airbase, um, you talked about filing notums and things like that, so just give us a quick look at that. Yeah, so across the top you can see we've got missions, flights, hardware, people, documents, and then this last tab over here is notums. So going into notums, this will allow you to connect with flight services, with LIDOS, with 1800 WX Brief, T 
to easily file a COA through Airbase without having to go into another piece of software. So easy, you know, just give it a name, uh, select the aircraft that you're going to use, the COA ID, start date, end date, and then you add a location. And once you click save, you're left with a little tab and basically gives you the basic information about your yeah. NOTAM or your UAS operating area, depending on whether or not you're flying 107 or you're flying under a COA. Awesome. One other thing I love about this too that, that we've used and, and have counseled some agencies on is you can change the permissions for every single person in your organization. Exactly. So you can lock down. You can lock yes. down. So the, the admin people can have access to everything, but then the individual pilot can't get into everybody else's records. And yep. Not say anybody's going to do anything right. nefarious, but you have that ability. But it, it also comes into play for mutual aid responses, where you know you can create what we call like a, a view only account, and you can hand that login out to everybody involved. So with the Super Bowl or with any 500, we had something similar, uh, where you just create a login, lock that login down. And literally all they can do is log in and view a flight. They can't see any of this telemetry data. They can't get into any of your hardware, any of your people information. They're literally just locked down and can only view the, the live flights happening in Op Center. And the last thing I want to tell people about is the reporting function. Yep, so reporting, there's three types of reporting that the software offers right now. The drone report, a pilot report, but then the most important one for those of you flying under a COA is the COA report. Those are you know, monthly required by the FAA. Uh, but it's fairly simple, at least for the, the COA report, you know, you would just select a COA ID with your start and end date, and then it'll generate the report and pull all the information required by the FAA. Um, the drone report and the pilot report are fairly similar, you know, select a drone, and then uh, start date, end date, and you simply click generate, and it's going to pull up a report based on that period. So it's going to give you some information like what drone, was being flown, how much flight activity it had, the firmware of the aircraft, and then all the pilots that flew on that aircraft during that time frame. Any incidents that happened are all going to be reported there as well. So this all goes back to what we talked about in the writing SOPs for your department's policy or your department's program. All these things are in there. This is a great way to keep track of them all. No more writing things exactly. down by hand. And the best part about all this is it all happens automatically. So you literally fly through the app, it downloads all the serial numbers and all the flights and the pilot tracking yeah. and all that kind of stuff. You don't have to do any extra work. So uh, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Really appreciate it. Yeah, man. You guys do amazing work and we're thrilled to be uh, both partners and resellers. So if you guys have questions about Drone Sense, reach out to us, uh, info at skyfireconsulting.com. If you like what you see here on Propeller Heads TV, you can always subscribe or shoot us an email and we will subscribe you to our weekly Propeller Heads newsletter. So thank you so much. That'll do it for this episode. We'll talk next time.